What's up YouTube and welcome to another Infinite Painter tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can create this stained glass heart design. Now of course there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below. The canvas size, the palette image that I've provided for you which actually has two different variations of the palette. So you can follow along with a multicolored version like I've done or you can go ahead and just use those nice red, pinky, orange tones if you want more of a heart style to your particular design but i do encourage you to pick any type of color and mess around to your heart's content as long as you follow the, the sort of principles of the design you're all good to go now as always when you're done make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on instagram come and join me over on facebook as well both are linked in the description down below and if you want to go ahead and support the channel and the work that i do here you can go ahead now and become a member of the channel where you can get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time the longer you are a supporter which you can flash in the comments section of every single video and you can also get early access to these tutorials and in the future I'm potentially going to do some members only tutorials as well. So if you want to support the channel again and the work that I do here, hit the link in the description down below and become a supporter today. And with all that said, let's get started. So as I typically do with my tutorials, I've set the canvas size to 2000 by 2000. Feel free to set that to 1000 by 1000 if you want some more stability. I've also gone ahead and changed my background color to black by just dragging into the bottom left of the dial there. And I've also gone ahead and turned off the time lapse option. This is usually on by default. I think if you turn it off, you should get a little bit more stability from the app as well. You want to focus on your drawing and not sort of overwhelm the app too much. So if we hit the option of create, we've got our canvas. And the first thing, as I always do, we're going to want to go ahead and introduce our palette for today. So we're going to go up to the three dots in the top right. We're going to go to the option of import. And you're going to want to grab it from either your photos or your files, depending wherever you saved it. Once you found it, tap on it. And once you've tapped on it and you've selected the palette image, it's going to ask you, do you want to add it in as a layer or a reference? And if we add it as a reference, it will pop itself up in the top right there. We can go ahead and we can make it bigger or smaller. We can go ahead and grab whatever colors we want from that. Now, with my device, I can go ahead and tap and you can see the color here. Every single time I tap, it changes the color. Now, if you don't have the equipment that is doing that, if you go up to your three dots and go to settings and go ahead and go to the long press option here under gestures, and set it to the eyedropper that will allow you then to hold down and you should then see a little ring appear around your finger and you can just hold down and grab the colors from the palette now the palette is somewhat split up into two different sections we've got this bottom row which is more for the pinker ready warmer like more love based tones and then you've got the other tones at the top if you want to do a really multicolored stained glass window i'm going to go ahead i think and do the multicolored version but you can go ahead and just use the warmer tones at the bottom and you can just create whatever you like now with our canvas ready to go we can go up to the create options here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in a symmetry option of vertical and once you tap on that you'll get this line drop down the middle now at the minute mine's currently locked so yours will look like this just tap on this little lock icon here and that will lock that silver line that's very faint running down the middle of your screen and that will allow you now to draw on one side and it be reflected, of course, on the other. So as an example, if I go ahead and grab anything, what I do on one side, you can see there is now nicely reflected. Now we're going to go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to go to calligraphy. We're going to go to the monoline brush. We're going to set the size of the monoline brush to 20. And we're going to set our color to white in the top left. So just drag up into the top left of the dial. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to go up to our create options. We're going to use the shape option here of the line tool. This will just help us nicely create some really easy shapes. And we're going to start in the middle of our symmetry line. And we're just going to get started by creating the outline of the heart. So we're just going to go ahead and draw out a line here. The wonderful thing with the line tool is once you're done with it, you'll get these two dots on either end. And you can then go ahead and readjust them if you need to and really tidy up your lines as you go. So just try and sort of factor that into your own work if you need to, you know, any little tidy ups you need to do. And then when you're done with a line, just tap away anywhere and it will just cancel that line out. So we're drawing one line in and we're just going to create the outline of the heart. So you're creating all these little shapes all the way around the top edge. And of course, we're getting that lovely reflection on the opposite side. So every time I undo, it's typically because I've just not aligned it sort of first time. And I'm tapping away every time and then we're drawing in all these lines down the edge we're going to draw out to around about here and then we're going to do another one that sort of dips in ever so slightly so we're getting that lovely curve at the top and then from here all we need to do is draw in a line from here all the way down to the center point now it does actually snap if you see here it's actually kind of snapped to a 45 degree angle and i'm not against that so when it gets towards the middle 
that looks pretty good. The only thing I need to do is zoom in here, realign that line because that just looked a little bit untidy. You want your line work to be nice and tidy, especially at this stage. It's much, much easier to correct something now. And I'll tap away. Zooming out, I've got the outline of the heart. We can then go ahead and start to work on the inside area of it and make our way around the edges. So the first thing I want to do is start in the middle up here. I'm going to create my triangle because all of our shapes that we're going to create are actually going to be sort of triangular shapes. So we can just really bear that in mind as we go. I'm going to draw in a line across. Again, it should actually somewhat snap and that's perfect. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to make our way up and around this edge here. Now, sometimes you may see me sort of draw lines and then they're more rectangular shapes rather than um, triangles. We will get there eventually with sort of adjusting them. For a minute, we're just going to go ahead and draw this one into around about this point here so that what I can do is I can drag it into here and I can drag into here. And we've created essentially a bit of a junction just here where we can start to feed lines into to create triangles. And now we have just triangles around here. We're going to create another junction that's going to somewhat sit here as well. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to bring a triangular shape. So again, I just want to make sure my lines are nice and tidy. I want to bring that in and I'm going to bring in another line into there too. And then this is going to act again as another junction. So I'm going to join these two together. And then I'm just going to split these two up by just drawing in a diagonal line through them again into this junction here. Have some fun creating whatever sort of shapes you want for your design. Everybody's will look different. That's perfectly fine. We just want to create all these little triangle shapes to create our stained glass window. Now, before we just sort of continue around here, I'm going to go ahead and just at the bottom now, I'm going to draw in a triangle at the bottom. So I'm going to bring this one up a little bit up into say here. This one's going to be a little bit sort of steeper and I'm going to draw in a line across. This angle here is critical because we can draw a line essentially from there to there almost uh, using all of our little junction lines. Now from there in the middle, if we create our little center column, we should then also give ourselves a nice little sort of area to work off of. So I'm going to draw in another line and I don't want it to be sort of continuation of this line. I even need to make it a little bit narrower or I need to make it a little bit wider than that line. So it looks like I might need to make mine a little bit more narrow. Just so again, I don't get that continuation. So I want to do it as much as I can to around about here. And we're going to draw in a line again, straight across, nice and tidy. And then I'm going to draw in a line here. So we're just creating triangle shapes as we go. We're breaking down squares into triangles. And then here, we're going to go ahead and draw in another triangle point into here. And again, we're going to create somewhat of a junction. So I'm going to draw in a triangle here and draw in a triangle here. And now we've linked the top and bottom together. We now have another junction here that we can then start to work some more lines off of. And we'll come round to that. It will eventually all just simply link together nicely. So we can just create another one off of here. I'm going to let that one run into like here, for example. And then again, I can just go from my junction points. A junction is just where lots of lines just end up sort of pointing together, essentially. I can go ahead and I could create another kind of junction here where I can then join that across. I can bring that one down. I can bring this one into here. You can't really stretch that out too far. So you may have to sort of draw in a line and then maybe chop that in half just to create some, you know, smaller shapes. We don't want to make them massive, do we? We want to have that nice, small look to it. Again, I'm just going to tidy that line up. And then here we're essentially going to end up with a bit of a line. So we need to kind of sort of factor that in. So I'm going to draw in a shape here and I need this one to be a little bit higher and I can link that one to that one. And then I'm going to take a look at this one and I'm going to bring a triangle down here. I'm going to bring a triangle here, triangle down into there. And then I'm going to tap away. I'm going to draw in another triangle here and the lines are trying to snap every time we do that. So just bear that in mind. And then I'm going to draw in to the center of here because then that can just act as we keep saying as a junction. So that can go to there. I can go ahead and sort of join that to there. I can join this one to here. I can join that one into there and we can do the same and we can just keep breaking down our shapes. Now you don't want to make these shapes too small and this is what you should be aiming for. So once you've got this, you've got everything you need in order to carry on with the rest of the design. 
So we're done. Let's do our three dots and hit save as we should do. As you complete every single step, you should try and save just to give Infinite Painter a chance to catch up and be a bit more stable. And we're going to tap on our line tool here to get rid of it because we're done with it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new layer. You're going to drag it underneath our line work. So your line work should be here and you've got an empty layer underneath. We're going to go ahead and go up to our create options. We're going to go to the fill option. Now I'm going to show you a tool that we've not yet used. We need this icon here to be turned on to the point where it has two squares. So this is what it looks like by default. If I tap on it, you can see it now has a sort of two squares layered on top of each other. So what that means is the fill tool now is looking at the line work, so the layer above the one we're working on, as a reference guide as to what to do. So let's go ahead, for example, and grab blue. So you can see my colors changed. I've tapped on this blue here. I can now simply tap here. Notice how, again, it's just a triangle shape in the center of that triangle. And if I was to tap on that and turn it off and I tap in the middle of a triangle, it will just simply fill the whole design. So it's using the layer above as a guide and saying, what are the line works on that layer or what are the shapes on that layer? And then we can go ahead and fill in accordingly. Now, we're just gonna go ahead and just tap away. And the only rules I want you to try and abide by is when you change color, so I'll switch to yellow now, you just wanna go ahead and make sure no colors touch or sort of you don't have two colors side by side. So what I'm doing now is I'm just tapping on the red I'm going to tap in, I'm going to fill in a lot of my primary colors to start with, and I'm going to fill some more in there. And then I'm going to go ahead to the greens, I'll grab the bright green, don't want to do too many, just a few here and there, and we'll eventually build up now to the point where we've got the majority of our primary colors. Let's even grab the orange as well on the middle of the far left. I want you to just grab whatever color you want, you know, it doesn't all need to match necessarily. And then we can grab some of these other tones. So I've got like the second color on that top row. I've got a nice darker tone. And then I'm just going to make my way through some of these tones here. Just tap in, selecting a new color, taking a look at my design, thinking, can I, can I drop that in there? Will it touch another color of a similar color? And it looks like so far so good. We'll go to the purples. We'll grab the dark purple. The purples will look great in here. And then I'll grab the second one, grab the more punchy, more saturated version. Maybe pop one up there too. And we can go ahead and we can grab a variation of the blue, slightly darker one. Again, with the sort of off tones, so the lighter tone and the uh, brighter tone, just maybe add in a couple. Don't add in too many. And again, if you're doing the multicolored stained glass window, you just want to do the top two rows. The bottom row there is if you're just going to do the sort of more love based, warmer red tones only. I'm just grabbing all the colors. I'm just chucking them in. Let's see where we can drop it in. And you can see now I'm just sort of going back on myself. I'm seeing what I can then go ahead and fill the remaining gaps with. Don't be afraid to use the primary colors. Again, also don't be afraid to use the darker colors. Uh, let's grab a slightly darker red as well. Let's maybe chuck that in there. And it's just a, a balancing game now of taking a look at your own design and thinking, hang on, can I fit somewhere in there? Will that fit? Will that touch a similar color nearby? And can we just fill in the rest of our design? Let's go for the saturated purple. I'm gonna pop one in there too. I'm gonna to go for the saturated blue and I'm gonna pop one there. And this one here, what could we get away with in there? We could maybe do a blue. We could maybe go ahead. Let's see if we can grab a different color. Let's maybe grab. So we can't do green, can't do purple, can't do, you could do yellow. You could do a tone of yellow. Let's grab this one. Let's chuck that in there. Let's go ahead and put one in there too. So this one here, I want you to have some fun with it. I want you to also potentially, when you're done with today's tutorial, maybe try and just do your own color palette. You know, maybe think of a color palette that you'd like the look of and just do that instead. You know, fill it in based on what it is, you know, your sort of color goal you want it to be. So I can maybe grab some of these pinker tones at the bottom actually, just to sort of fill in the rest of the gaps. So we've got some lovely different hues in there. And this one should then give it a little bit more color. And all you want to do is just make sure you fill in the entirety. So I've got one more left. Can't do yellow, can't do green, can't really do blue. But let's go ahead then and let's grab the bright orange and pop that in there. And then this is what you should then have as a result. Again, feel free to then change any of the colors if you want. It will all look really cool towards the end, I promise. So we'll hit the tick, we'll hit the three dots, we'll save. And now you've got your colored layer. Make sure if you turn off your eye up here, that you have this cutout sort of system. 
If you've accidentally pressed on the line, you're gonna to have to undo it and redo it again. You don't wanna tap on the lines, you only want it to tap to have the triangles. So let's go to our white line work. You saw it flash there. We're gonna tap on it, we're gonna duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. I want you to tap on it and I want you to clip it to the colored layers. Now, before we carry on, I wanna go ahead and go to my color. I wanna grab black in the bottom left. I'm gonna go up to my create options and fill. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna purposely tap on my white lines. Now, you wanna take a look at your thumbnail there and just see if it's just bled into any colors. So for example, what I mean is if the strength is too high, you may get these black triangles in the shapes there. Tap with two fingers to undo and just tap and drag to the left or right to just adjust the strength. All we want is the line work to be black. Hit the tick when you're done. We're then gonna go up to our create options. We're gonna go to edit. We're gonna go to the option here of filters and we're gonna go to structure and blur. So we're now blurring out those lines. I'm gonna leave it at 50%. I'm gonna hit the tick. I'm gonna tap on the layer. I'm gonna grab my create options. I'm gonna to go to edit. I'm gonna to go to transformation and we're just gonna drag that down. So just dragging it down, creating a bit of a drop shadow in each of the individual shapes. Look how cool and 3D that looks already and hit the tick when you're done. Now that's not the finished blend mode. So we're gonna tap on the layer, we're gonna change its blend mode from normal, we're gonna change it to overlay, which is gonna bring through a little bit more of the color of each individual color in the shadow. And then if we tap on that, we duplicate it, we should then end up with this result here. Now, before we add in some further effects, let's work on the line work above. We're gonna go ahead and we've got the white lines here, we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna duplicate it. And the top one, you're gonna tap on it and clip it to itself. Again, we want black selected and we wanna to go to our fill option. So create and fill. And we're gonna tap on the white lines here. Now look at your thumbnail, just make sure that your layer hasn't filled in any triangles. So tap to undo and then again, just tap and drag to the left just to lower the strength and hit the tick when you're done. So you should just have black lines only. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go up to your create options, edit, basic transformation, and we're gonna drag it down just the tiniest bit until you end up with this beautiful white crispy highlight on your line work. So now your sort of stained glass bars have got a little bit of lighting coming from above. You can make it really subtle and move it down a little bit. You can move it down a lot. It's totally up to you. I like it quite subtle. So I'm gonna move it down a little bit. You could even if you want to move it off to the right ever so slightly as well. So down and to the right like so. And once you've got that effect, you can hit the tick when you're done. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in some extra lighting effects onto both of these. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab our multicolored layer, we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna duplicate it. So all your triangles, tap on the bottom one, drag it to the top of your layers. So hold down on it, drag it to the top, tap on it and clip it also to your frame. So clip it. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our three dots again, we'll hit save, but we'll go to our edit options, so edit, We'll go to filters, we'll go to structure and blur, and we're gonna blur out our lines and it just gives your bars there a little bit of like a color bleed so that you can see some of the color then sort of making its way through the glass window onto the bars. Now, I think something quite subtle around about 50 to 60% looks good. Please decide what looks best you think for your design. I'm gonna go for 50, I'm gonna go for 51% there and hit the tick when I'm done. And if you turn it on and off, you can see the difference in the effect, which looks awesome. Let's then go ahead and again, add in some further effects. So we're gonna tap on our colored area down here for our nice stained glass window. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure our color is set to black and we're gonna go to our brush. And we wanna find kind of a grungy style brush. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually go into charcoals and I'm gonna use this coarse charcoal brush here. The size is gonna be set to its maximum size and color is set to black. And what I want you to do is I just want you to run over the top of your stained glass window. Now, notice how it did it symmetrically there. I wanna turn that off. So I'm gonna tap on here to get rid of our symmetry option now. And I'm just gonna lightly go all the way over our window here, adding in a bit of age to it. And you can get in there maybe and darken up certain patches if you want and really kind of, you know, age it in certain spaces. Now at the minute, that looks a little bit kind of messy and almost dirt-like, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap on the layer. 
we're going to change its blend mode from normal to the option of soft light and then that's going to blend in a little bit into the colors and then you can tap on it and duplicate it if you want to to get even more color and texture and you could go up again to a third time if you want as well i think the stronger the contrast the better this tends to look and it just looks like an aged stained glass window the next step is to go ahead and add in some lighting coming from sort of behind and through your window so you've got this area here with your texture go ahead and create a new layer tap on it you're going to tap on the layer blend mode and we're going to change it here to the option of linear dodge and if we tap away we want to make sure our color now is set to white in the top left of your dial we're going to go ahead and go to your brush tap on your brush and make sure you're going to sprayers and soft airbrush and my size is max dial well it's not max dial, sorry about three five six and you can see my settings here for the opacity flow etc now what we're going to go ahead and do is you can draw in two diagonal beams let's move our layers out of the way and you can pick and choose how hard you want this pressure to be as well or how big you maybe you want to make that a little bit smaller maybe 280 and you can just run a line like this through your glass and then another one maybe off to the side like so just to give it a bit of a shiny effect it's totally optional you don't have to do it or you can tap on it and lower the opacity down as well if you want to just to lower the sort of the amount of sort of color that's coming through i might tinker with that afterwards but about 90 percent for me looks good based on the lines that i've drawn and where i've added my colors in and the next step is to just add in a little background element so we're going to go ahead and first of all we're going to go to our layers and we're going to go ahead and grab the bottom layer we're going to tap on it we're going to duplicate it and then what i want you to do is i want you to try and just move all your layers so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our layer we're going to go up to our three dots up here for create edit and basic transformation again and you can select multiple layers and move them all at the same time you see this little checkbox in the bottom right of every layer just tap on it to select it so you'll see the little blue tick pop in and we want to select every single layer for a moment just so i can move mine into the center of my design it's important to do this just before we do our background element so i'm moving that into the center hitting the tick when i'm done and then we can go to the bottom one Again, let's go ahead and go up to our three dots and save just in case. And we've got this extra one at the very bottom. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to our edit options. We're going to go to filters and we're going to scroll down. We're going to go right towards the bottom. We're going to use the spin option for this one. I'm going to tap on it and we're going to use this twice. Now, what the spin does is it blurs your design in the direction that you decide here at the bottom. And I want to create this kind of circle effect in behind. So I'm going to go all the way to the right 100% and hit the tick. And then I'm going to go and do it again. I'm going to go up to create, edit, filters, scroll to the bottom, spin. And we're going to do it in the opposite direction. And that should then create this really lovely kind of radial blur in the background and hit the tick when you're done. Now you can, if you want to, then blur that again. You could go up to, again, your create options, edit. You can go to edit and filters. You could go to structure and blur. And you could then blur that out just to create like a really nice glow in behind. And it's using the colors of the design as well, which I think looks really sweet. And you could hit the tick at about sort of 75% and hit the tick when you're done. And if we go ahead and we pinch with two fingers, we go full screen with four. We end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this stained glass window heart design. Make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram when you're done. Come and join my Facebook group as well. All of it's linked in the description down below. And if you didn't already know, you can actually now support the channel and the work that I do here. You can go ahead and become a member of the channel where you can get early access to tutorials. You can also get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time that you can go ahead and use in the comments section as well to flash that you are a member of the channel. And in the future, I potentially might be doing some members only tutorials as well. So if you wanna support the work that I do here, check the link in the description down below and become a member of the channel today. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.